We have to be bold. We have tucked our tail, hidden our flag, hidden our colors, and we've went along to get along for the sake of our benefits, our income, our job. And so what's happened is we cannot reintroduce this lukewarm, half-hearted, ashamed Christianity. We need some people that say, bless God, I'm a Christian and the earth ain't been here a million years. I had a conversation. So I took several years of geology while I was in college uh, just to fill in requirements. And I spoke to the doctorate, the professor of the class. And I was like, sir, how is it that we know how long carbon expires? He's like, well, it expires at this rate for this long. I was like, but we haven't been able to study that for that long. So we don't know that's how long that expires. Yes. What I'm saying is, is that that carbon 14 or 13, I forget what it's called exactly. Um, what if it only expires in a hundred years? What, what if it goes down by this much in a hundred years? We haven't even tested these things for more than 70 years at most. Yeah. That's not an accurate amount of time. And things such as a flood, which you've proven, did cover the entire earth, might have decreased the amount of carbon in that soil. And that's why we're reading it as deteriorated as what you want to believe. And he really thought about that really hard. And uh, he said he'd get back to me with an answer. And I talked to him several times after that. He never had an answer for it. You know, I'll give you an example. Um, so I had a meeting with the school board. They gave me five minutes to come back in January and speak on, a, on an issue. And they required to know my point of discussion, which I didn't like. You know, I, I wanted just to be able to come in to discuss because they yeah. could dismiss you if so they already I, I knew what you wanted. I shared with them my subject matter and they were quiet. And they said, okay, well, you've got this amount of time on this date. I said, okay, great. They called me on that day and said, we have been forced to move the board of board meeting to Zoom. And then I responded, that's okay. I have Zoom at home. And they said, no, you're not allowed to share on Zoom. It's a closed meeting now. But we'll contact you back and get you on the agenda for the February meeting. Well, they've never contacted me back. They silenced me by ignoring me. You know, that we see that happening now all over the country, you know? Right. Um, so the, no doubt about it, the public school system is a government-ran system. The government that's running our country says that even though you're born with male anatomy, you can be a female. And even though you're born with female anatomy, you can be a male. Who wants those kind of people determining what our children are learning? I mean, that is, that is bizarre to me. Right. Trust the science? How can I trust the science when you don't trust the biology? Right. The simple anatomy. Uh, it is a... It is a contradictory system. We know that because it's not built on absolute truth. So that's why there's this great, you know, exodus into Christian schools. But even Christian schools, I just spoke to a friend of mine that he is the IT guy at a very, very prominent Christian school, K through 12. And they just passed that if a child is, has, you know, gender identity issues, you know, if Barbara wants to be called Bob, then this Christian school has agreed to call Barbara Bob. So even our Christian schools are not standing boldly for what we claim to believe. You know, I think that if we want to see radical change and reintroduce Christianity, there's going to be a price to pay. There has to be a price to pay. We say that we're built on the blood of the martyrs. You know, that we, the blood of the martyrs has watered the seed of the church. Uh, and today, nobody wants to be a martyr. I mean, even right now, I'm tempted to tell you to take, to not air this. Because I know people are not going to like what we're sharing here. Christian people, not the world. I don't care what the world thinks. Christians that say they love Jesus and love the Bible 
are going to vehemently disagree with me and be angry uh, because of things we've shared here. That's the culture and the climate we live in. Uh, there's no unity in the church. You know, um, I mean, to make the statement several years ago, I was uh, sharing the dangers of public school in the church from behind the pulpit. One family stood up and stormed out of the church, out the back of the church. It was so intense. I thought they maybe they got a phone call that someone had died or been in a car wreck, right? So I called them after church and said, hey, you know, is everything okay? And they said, look, we come to church to hear the Bible, not to hear your opinion about public school. I thought, my goodness, this is the church. We're to speak the truth about the public school's agenda against Christianity. No doubt about it. Yeah, they're, they are enforcing a religion that's different than ours that we think is heresy and yes. wrong. Yes, And we should be able to speak out about that behind the pulpit in mediums like this in any way possible. Just We should have just as much free reign to talk about how they're wrong as they talk about us being wrong. And Absolutely. they will take every opportunity to do that because they know that a lot of us won't speak up on it. Absolutely. And they know if we speak up on it, we'll be shot by our own ranks. Yeah. yeah. See, they know if we speak up <laughs> against it, our own people will implode on those that speak up. And that is this constant turmoil yeah. And this washing machine cycle of us never getting anywhere. Because the world is unified in their hate against God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, the church, the Word of God. But the church is not unified in even supporting each other um, in their stand against this, this government school. So uh, I'll, I want to say I've enjoyed the topics for today. I'm going to send this to the people when this airs. I'm going to send this to the people that ask the questions. Thank you, Pass, for being with us today. Uh, hopefully you all are enjoying the discussions and are able to think about these kind of topics. Uh, thank you for joining us. So before we end, uh, I think we should also take time to pray for the Ukraine. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil going on there, and... There are Christians that are oh, yeah. uh, so they launched an attack a last night. Is that correct? From what I understood, or was night it before last? Night before yeah. last. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Titus is breaking. In. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds like what's going on in the Ukraine. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things happening there. Uh, a lot of scary things for a lot of people. Yeah. I uh, saw on the news earlier today at least already a hundred thousand mm. Ukrainians have been uh, moved from where they live, and that. Russia has taken over Chernobyl, where the power plant was, yeah. and that there are a lot of scary things occurring there, and I think that we just need to pray yeah. uh, for Time those people stop. and for the rest of the world yeah. uh, for uh, what may come of it. And two of the things we need to pray about, too, with that is the brutality against the Canadians from the police department yeah. there, mm -hmm. and the brutality there in France. Uh, it's just unbelievable <clears throat> what's happening with Russia, France, in Canada right now. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're, the world's shaping up for what God said it was going to do. Yeah. And it's, you know, believers... The whispers of war are here. That's exactly right. I mean, we're on the cusp of a very, very serious situation here. Yeah. Um, and you've all noticed, and we've noticed and felt, how rapidly things have changed in mm -hmm. the last two years. And it's going to only accelerate. I mean, this yeah. deal with Ukraine and Russia, I mean, it is going to accelerate. And yeah. We need to pray. So, you want to pray? Uh, not this time. Okay. Father, we come uh, together as your sons, Lord, and we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for working in our life, God. Thank you for speaking to us through your word. Thank you for leading us by your spirit, God. And we... Uh, have a burden in our heart, God, to pray for those in the Ukraine, God, right now. God, what uh, what a sad, God, what a sad situation. And God, we do ask for mercy. We do ask for grace. God, you, God, you said that these woes would come, but you said woe unto them through whom they come. 
And so, God, we do pray for your people that are in harm's way, that you would protect them, lead them. God, we pray for those that don't belong to you. God, that you would prick their heart and open their understanding that they may receive Jesus Christ. We pray for those in Canada right now, God. We pray for those in France. God, there is uh, the world stage is setting up, God, and we know there's this push by the new world order, God, for this great reset, God, to create a socialist world, God, and we, we know that this is coming, and God, these are very frightening times, but God, they're also very uh, sobering times for your children. So God, I pray that the church would obey. I pray that the church would trust you. I pray, God, that the church would respond to you, God. We just pray, Lord, that you would bring peace and unity. We love you. Thank you for loving us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.